A portion of this video has been sponsored by Squarespace. This is the frame of my CO2 laser cutter that I'm building. I designed this machine from scratch and tried to use parts that are easy to get or 3D print. It will have cutting dimensions of about 33 by 20 inches or 840 by 500 millimeters for all of our metric friends out there. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how I assembled this, wired it up, and eventually some projects I make with it. To get started, I needed to cut all the pieces of the frame to length. I used aluminum extrusion because it allows for a lot of adjustability while assembling. Both 2020 and 2040 V-slot profiles were used for this build. Using the V-slot extrusion allows me to incorporate the linear movement directly into the frame just like most 3D printers these days. Since I made a detailed CAD model for this machine, I could just pull the dimensions from that and use that as a cut list. Creating a cut list like this helps me prevent mistakes while doing math or conversions in my head while I'm cutting pieces. And don't worry guys, I made sure to wear my safety squints while I was cutting this aluminum. Now, I designed the rest of the laser cutter to be assembled using plates. I first 3D printed these plates to make sure everything fit correctly, and then I used my CNC router to cut these plates from quarter inch aluminum. This entirely aluminum structure should make the frame very rigid and hopefully lead to more accurate cuts. Now if you don't have access to a CNC router, you could also leave the plates as 3D printed, and it would probably work fine. You could also cut the plates and drill the holes by hand, but having a CNC router really makes the process a lot faster and more accurate. When I'm done with this project, I will, as always, share my designs and CAD files for free. With all the plates cut, the assembly could begin. In many of the corners, I use these small right angle braces. This will hopefully make sure that the frame is square. Both the X and Y axis use a plate with V wheels to slide on the aluminum extrusion. These have eccentric nuts on them, so you can slide it onto the frame and then tighten it to remove any play. One nice thing about using aluminum plates is I can tap holes, which eliminates the need for a lot of nuts and makes assembly a lot easier. Once the plates are assembled, they slide right onto the rails. The motors get mounted to some aluminum plates as well and then get mounted to the frame. The aluminum plate should hopefully act as sort of a heatsink to prevent the motors from getting hot. Before we get any further in this build, I want to take a quick second to thank this video's sponsor, Squarespace. No matter what type of website you're building, you can do it with Squarespace. They make it easy to pick from a variety of templates which will get you started, and then from there there's almost unlimited customization you can do. If you make projects like me, then a custom website could be a great place to document your work. Squarespace makes it really easy to upload pictures and videos of whatever project you're doing, and then you can even post your products for sale if you'd like. You can get started for free today, and then when you're ready to make a purchase, you can use my link, which is squarespace.com forward slash Michael Recton, or just use code Michael Recton for 10% off. Now let's get back to the laser cutter. I also designed a pretty cool 3D printed belt tensioner. It works the same as the ones that come on a lot of printers these days, and it just slides in either pulley by tightening an M4 screw but it's all 3D printed, so I thought that was kind of cool. With everything mounted, I could add a belt to each side of the Y-axis. I'm just using GT2 belt because it's easy to find and cheap, and then to hold the belts in place, I loop them and then fit them into these slots. I made these 3D printed pieces which clamp the belt down. Then I can tension the belt just by tightening that one M4 screw. I was really excited with how well these belt tensioners worked. If anyone was building a 3D printer, it would definitely work for something like that too. Next up was assembling the X-axis. The carriage uses the same eccentric nuts and V-wheels, and then there's this perpendicular plate to hold the laser head. This is the piece that will hold the mirror and the lens to reflect the beam down and focus it for cutting.
The motor could then be mounted to the top of the rail and a belt could be added around it. For the idler pulley, I didn't really have room to use the belt tensioner, so instead I just resin printed a simple mount for it. This part could definitely be FDM printed, but instead I used the Soraya Tech nylon black resin because it's really tough. For this axis, I just looped the belt and held it in place with some of these 3D printed clips. Now, although laser cutters really only cut in 2D, they are actually three axis machines. This third axis is moving the bed up and down. They do this because the laser beam is only focused at a specific point. To get the best results when cutting, you have to move the bed up and down to line up your workpiece with this focus point. In my design, this is done by adding some of these smaller NEMA 17 motors to each corner. Each motor will turn an 8mm threaded rod, which is supported by a bearing at the top. The bed is attached to these plates which have a brass nut embedded, so turning the threaded rod will cause the bed to raise and lower. The laser tube, which is this giant scary glass tube of death, will sit on the back of the machine, and to support it, I made some 3D printed mounts. These mounts allow the tube to be adjusted in two different axes. This will allow me to align the tube to the mirrors on the machine. The tube then drops in and is tightened down. The last thing to add is some limit switches and cable chains. All these attach using 3D printed parts. And of course I forgot to model some holes, so I'll just mark those and drill it by hand. The mounts for the cable chain were printed on the new Anycubic Cobra Go printer that they sent over. It's pretty similar to a lot of the Ender 3 style printers out there, but it prints pretty well. So thank you Anycubic, very cool. At this point, we have a frame with everything mounted and moving freely. There's still a lot to do though. In future videos, I'm going to show wiring, building the enclosure, as well as figuring out how to cut with this thing. There's more to come on this project as well as others, so subscribe for that, and I'll see you in the next one.